Welcome back! It has been two weeks and now I want to give you some of my opinions of my first sensor and I actually have a second sensor on. So I actually kind of have a two slash three week first impressions, what it's like having it, and what it's like with another sensor. So to start off, I thought I'd just run through some basics. First of all, was there pain in the insertion? No, there was not. I didn't experience any pain in my right arm and I didn't experience any pain in my left arm. Like with most things, it was the idea of doing it that was the worst, but not the actual doing. How aware am I of the sensor while wearing it? Not very. So much so that when I'm in the shower, sometimes I forget and I'm scrubbing and I've caught it a couple times. Not that I've ever pulled it off, but that I've just been like, oh, I forgot it was there. It's such a low profile and it's such a small unit, about the size of a two pound coin or a quarter, an American quarter, in terms of diameter. So it's very small, especially because it's on the back of the arm. I don't even see it on myself really, unless I'm turned to the side. And even then, it's sort of a nothing. So how did it stay? I was very curious about this myself. Was it going to stay without any overtake? The answer is it completely stayed on without overtake. However, I do have one kind of comment about this because as you'll notice, I've done a bit of overtake on my second sensor. IV3000, I think is, is what it's called. I think that's what it is. I'll put the link to it in the description box down below because I just ordered it off of Amazon. I've taped this one because it wasn't the stickiness to the actual arm that failed on me. Not at all. In fact, that was very difficult to get off. You'll see in a clip me taking it off. It was like really intense to get off actually. But it's the... So you see there, it's not the tape that stuck to me that was the issue. It was the sort of tape that was between the unit and the tape. I found that coming loose a little bit. Now, would it have come off completely? I think it there, there would have taken quite a bit of oomph to make that happen. So I didn't tape on my right arm at all. I didn't I wanted to truly do by the book what Freestyle Libre suggested, and that was just put it on, no over tape needed one and done. And I have very, very good results with that in terms of staying power. In terms of my left side, I'm not sure if it's the location it is, but when I lay on my side, I feel that tape kind of coming off and it feels like the disc is kind of floating and it's not totally stuck to itself. And then thus it feels like a little bit scary to me, like, am I going to turn over and it's just going, the, the tape will be stuck to me, but the device will have come out. I don't know. That's why I've opted for over tape on this one. But in terms of the actual staying power of this stickiness against your skin, whoa, is really strong. It's like really on there. Oh my gosh. Oh my word. Now I understand why it's on there so... There we go. It wasn't painful, it wasn't difficult, but it was very, very stuck, which I don't mind because then I know this is like a really strong thing and it's not going to come off and I'm not going to waste my money and all that jazz. I was really impressed with on day 14 the actual stickiness of it. It was like almost like gummy. Very very strong. But again, I don't mind that at all. Something to know about the Freestyle Libre, there's no calibration needed. So the Freestyle Libre is a flash glucose monitor. It's reading your interstitial fluid every five minutes to get a blood sugar. However, you only get that information by scanning it, either with the reader or your phone. And as long as I believe you scan it every eight hours, you can get all the data from the past eight hours. But if you leave it over eight hours, then you're going to lose some data on the front end of that. So it's not constantly pushing you the information, you have to initiate getting the information, which is just a different style of CGM. You either have the CGMs that push the information to you, either to your phone or to your pump or what have you, and this is one that you choose when to access. So let's break down some numbers here. The sensor lasts 14 days. The cost of a sensor, and this is in the UK, is $49.29, which is excluding VAT for the 14 day period that breaks down to three pounds and 52 pence per day. The starter pack, which is what I initially purchased from Abbott, was... I got my notes here because these numbers. The starter pack is 133.29. That includes your reader and two sensors. Now, this reader you don't need, given that now we have the iPhone app. 
capability. However, I like the idea of also having the reader because in case my iPhone fails, my battery dies, anything like that, I've got my reader. But if I'm honest, I have not used the reader so much because my iPhone's always near and dear to me. Almost too near and dear. Also, interesting thing to note, of course this makes sense, but these two do not update one another because there's no Bluetooth or Wi-Fi capability in this, therefore it cannot talk to the cloud and then send your results. And same with this, this cannot send results to a unit that's not connected to the internet. But let's talk about the ease of use of this product. I couldn't have found it easier to use, in all honesty. From the insertion, to the even downloading of the iPhone app, to the swiping, to the waiting 60 minutes for it to warm up, it was just very, very easy. And in terms of actually accessing the information, something to note, if you have your phone here, it's not going to read. If you have your phone here, it's not going to read. You need the top of your phone next to that sensor in order to get the information. It just must have a very small range of transmission. However, I've done it through thick winter coats, sweaters, layers akimbo, not a problem. So it's not so much the distance away here, I would say. It's more you need the top of the iPhone to be in range like that as opposed to you're not going to be able to read it if you just swipe like that. It needs to be up top there. So the big one, the one I think we're all probably here for, I definitely, this is the whole reason I got the unit, was what's the accuracy like? I am pleased to report that the accuracy is incredible. It's been incredible for me. That's not to say it will be incredible for everyone. However, I have found the accuracy to be extremely, extremely close to finger sticks, if not completely the same, which I was really, 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 really pleased about. That was on my first sensor. On my second sensor, on my left arm, have I had the same experience? I have. Pleased to report that as well. I will say I've been battling some highs recently, and so I've gotten to know that on the higher end of the spectrum, it's not as spot on. Maybe in a finger stick it says I'm 16, and it will say I'm 18, or vice versa. It'll be about two millimoles per deciliter off. Occasionally, up at the top range, it starts going a little askew around maybe 16 millimoles per deciliter up. But other than that, I just, I am actually astounded by the accuracy. There's no other way to put it. And that's been such music to my ears. Because when your CGM's not accurate, what actually is the point? The, it, not only is there no point, it actually makes things more confusing, more difficult, you have just more random numbers being thrown at you that you have to account for. Doesn't make any sense to me. Some random facts I thought I'd share with you guys. On average, I did 40 scans a day, which I thought was just interesting. Another random fact is that it takes the Freestyle Optimum test strips. Now they have regular blood glucose test strips and then they also have beta ketone test strips, which I think is very interesting because I noted that there's a little um, spot there to put a test strip. And I thought, hmm, what is that? Um, it's indeed that. This can also become your blood glucose reader. So rounding up, my honest, genuine, 100% opinion is that this thing has very much improved my life because it's very easy to use and it's very accurate. Even if it was less easy to use, the accuracy is what gets me every time. It's like, oh, thank goodness, an actual CGM that works. Well, it's a, it's a flash glucose monitor, but you know what I mean. Game changer. And just to say, I have not been paid at all. I wasn't sent this. I paid all my own money to buy the starter pack and everything like that. So these are all my genuine, honest opinions. This is what they are. The, my genuine, honest opinion is that it is the toppest of drawers. So the only niggle I have with it, and it really is a niggle at the moment, is that the ease of ordering. Okay, the ease of ordering is fine, but their stock apparently is so depleted at the moment that they can't fulfill orders. Like when you order, you, first of all, you can only order two at a time, which is like mm, a bit annoying. And then when you order, it's taking about three weeks to ship. 
so the fact that they're so backed up is bothersome to me. I think there's been a lot more information spread about it. I think a lot of people are catching on to how awesome this thing really is. I've heard rumblings that the NHS is going to support this. So I think there's a lot happening for Abbott at the moment with the Freestyle Libre and it's all happening very quickly. So this is maybe the reason for it. Also the release of the iPhone app, that's I'm sure a biggie for a lot of people. So overall, couldn't be more happy. This thing is here to stay as long as I can get them ordered. It's just awesome. And I've learned so much about what my blood sugar is doing overnight and where I can make bolus and basal adjustments and how certain meals are affecting me and others and all that sort of thing. It's just been an incredible tool, but it's been an incredible tool because it's accurate. Whereas there are other incredible tools on the market, but they just haven't worked for me. Hopefully that kind of gives you an overview of what it's like to have one of these bad boys. If you guys have any questions or comments about your experience with the Libre, maybe you're considering but you want to know something that I haven't covered in this video, please feel free to comment down below and I will, you know, interact with you there. And if you want me to make another video, maybe, I don't know, in six months time or something like that to see how this stands the test of time, comment down below as well and then maybe I can do that. Uh, it's really up to you guys though, so. Yeah, thank you so much for watching. If you made it to the end of this video, you probably deserve some sort of uh, medal. I don't have one to give you, but I'm giving it to you in my mind. I'm wishing you a wonderful day, great blood sugars, but most of all, a happy, healthy mind through it all. Life isn't perfect, diabetes isn't perfect, mm, God, no. but these things, these little electronic accompaniments really help and that's why I'm so passionate about making this video and talking about it because this has really helped me and maybe it will help you too. So there we have it. Thanks guys.